Hello, thank you so much for joining me once again. Today I am making a pair of white pants using a pattern that I modified from the one that Danny Chu offers for free on the Smart Doll website. I will leave a link down below. Uh, it's incredibly generous of him to offer this. He says that you can use it and you can even sell the things you make with it and that's awesome. I love it. So I figured I would put this video together, show you how I use this pattern. It is a simplified version. I have definitely modified it. I did bring the pant legs in a little bit to make them straight leg and I leave off the pockets and the belt loops. Uh, I like to make things quick and easy and I wanted these to look like dress pants. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so I have cut the pieces out using the patterns. You'll see on the long edges, I did use my pinking shears. I like to use those when I don't want to waste an entire bottle of fray check on stuff that is easy to cut with pinking shears. <laughs> so all of the other edges that I had cut smooth, and these are edges that I'm going to sew along and uh, want a little bit more precision for, I cover that with fray check. You'll notice that the uh, pockets are missing, the little belt loops are missing, that is all completely intentional. Um, this is an extremely simplified version. The material I'm using is a white uh, cotton cloth, very simple, just nice quality. Um, I am I think figuring out exactly how I'm going to sew this together and which order I want to do it in. And there's the pattern pieces if you wanted to see what I was comparing. So first we're going to put the yoke, back yoke to the back of the pants. There is just a tiny bit of a bend there that you'll want to make sure that you follow. And that actually helps with the shaping of the pants. And then I do a simple top stitch right over that to, to hold it down and look nice. And I have the seam allowance pointed downwards while I do that. Alright, now we are going to sew the front and the back pieces to each other. It is important to make sure that you're not making two of the same side, so make sure they mirror each other before you sew. Somehow my modified pieces ended up like slightly different widths at the bottom, which bugs me a little bit, but not enough to actually fix apparently. Um, it's not enough of a difference to make too big of a deal, but it is kind of irritating. And I do the outer seam first so that I can add another decorative stop top stitch. I'm doing all this in white. You don't have to if you want it. Oh no, look at <laughs> See that piece of thread? Yeah, that means it's not sewing. I ran out of bobbin thread partway through there. <laughs> oh, it's just as annoying watching it happen after the fact as it is when it does happen. But uh, you can just put, fill your bobbin thread back up. Hope you have enough thread on hand. And re-thread the machine. Anyway, as I was saying, with the topped stitching, you can do that in contrasting color. Uh, you see that a lot with jeans. With these dress pants, I thought just keeping it white would look nice. And 
and then you do the other side. Make sure your top stitching is going in the correct direction. <laughs> um, I tend to do it towards the back, so I'll push the seam towards the back, uh, the center back, and then top stitch over that. Oh, I decided to try something a little bit different this time from my normal methods. So I am matching up the center back seam, uh, center back crotch seam, and I'm going to sew that together. Careful to follow the curve as best you can. And snip your curve, making sure that you don't snip your seam. And this makes it lay much flatter and nicer. And then I did decide to go over and top stitch that one as well. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do just one side or both sides, and then I thought, eh, what the heck, and I did both sides. So now we have one big line, and I did this because I thought it would be easier to put the waist on this way, and I think in the end it was, but you can see it takes me a while to figure out exactly how the waistband is going to go on there. <laughs> like. How much do I have to fold over? And I thought maybe I had cut it wrong or something, but I eventually dug up some pants that I had purchased from the Smart Doll store. And you'll see them show up here in a second. And I looked at how it was sewn on those. And I could see, oh, okay. So one side got folded over about a centimeter and the other side only gets folded over about half a centimeter and that made a lot more sense to me <laughs> so it totally justifies buying the pants right I mean they're just a piece of artwork for one thing look at how beautiful and tiny and perfect they are but hey they helped me figure out this pattern too and then I noticed that he had only done the one side and apparently that's how you do it on jeans, but whatever, these are these are dress pants, it's fine, right? So once I had it all set in my head and I knew what I was doing, I stitched the two waistband pieces together because one is the inside lining and one is the outside. I did them out of the same fabric just because it's white and it's gonna look fine and it's nice thin fabric so I figured I could get away with it. So you can see I sewed along the short lines and then the top of the waistband, which is the slightly shorter side. And you can see it's kind of curved. Then you clip all your edges. I highly recommend clipping all of your edges as much as you can. Uh, at the corners you clip off actual chunks of fabric and during curves like the other part, the waistband, you just have to snip it a little bit. It makes things lay much nicer and flatter. Um, and then you wanna poke your corners out. I recommend poking the corners out with something a little on the softer side. This is just a plastic tool for swinging elastic. Um, if I were to use my pointy scissors for that, I would have probably pushed it through the fabric, which is no good. So, oh, when I sewed the waistband, I forgot to mention, I did leave about five centimeters unsewn on the small edges and you can see I am flipping up the what would that be the lining part of the waistband and I'm gonna sew the well it's all the same kind of fabric but it would be your main fabric if you had used a different kind of lining and I do recommend taking your time to Make sure that the waistband is even. And then you just hop back on the sewing machine and sew that down with a straight stitch. Oh, 
Oh, and I took the, uh, I took the moment to just sew up the crotch seam on the front just a little ways, essentially up to that little tab. Then I go and essentially top stitch the waistband, keeping the lining fabric down flat on the back side so that it covers most of your raw edges. And then I also take a moment to hem the pants. Oh, and I almost forgot, I do add a little bit of the detailing, again, just with the white thread. It doesn't really come up in pictures very much because it's not contrasting, but I think it just adds a nice touch. And then, I must have lost a little bit of footage, sorry about that, because I did pin this, but you just go up one leg. Uh, I backstitch a little bit over the crotch seam because it tends to get a lot of wear and tear. And then you go down the bottom, or the other leg. And hey, they seem awfully loose. And part of it is because they do need to hang a little bit lower on her hips, but the other part is probably because I did use light cotton material, and this is a pattern designed for heavy denim that will absolutely affect how your projects turn out and sometimes you might actually want to even alter the pattern. I didn't mind the difference too much here though. Uh, I don't mind that she has some kind of looser pants. So I marked where I wanted the closure to be, and then I snagged some nice clear snaps, because I figured I didn't really want them showing through, especially with the, the white material and everything else being white. I took out my marker pen and then decided against it because, oh yeah, I still need to do the other one. They are kind of annoying though when your thread gets wrapped around them. And then you sew the top one. When I'm sewing snaps, I usually do three stitches in each anchoring hole. Um, this is something that was drilled into me in my theater days because it tends to be pretty sturdy. I don't know with dolls it needs to necessarily be that sturdy all of the time, but I do like it. It tends to make things feel better. Uh, when I skimp out and just do one or two stitches, it seems like it seems loose and like it's gonna break eventually, but three seems like enough to keep the bulk down and just um, get it connected nicely. All right, so after trying it on again, I realize the pants are definitely, definitely too long for what I want. They'd work nice for jeans, of course, but these are supposed to be dress pants. And I realized that my creases were not in the right spot either, so you see me mark those with pins, and then try to figure out exactly how far up I want to hem my pants. Because, yeah. As just wasn't working for me at all. So I redo my pins just to get everything 
laying down nicely. And then I measure how far up my hem needs to go. And because I don't feel like hand stitching the hem up, because absolutely not, that's just not going to happen, I uh, pick out the seam just a little ways, just far enough up that I can comfortably fold it over and get it to go through the machine flat. And then using my measurement, I make sure that my hem is nice and even. And I don't bother taking out the old hem because why? It's not hurting anything. It adds a teeny tiny bit of bulk, but not in an area that's particularly important, so I'm not too worried about it. If you really want to know, and if it did bother you, you could always trim it and then hem it to the new length. Then we sew down our hem. And I think I'm turning the pants inside out. Yep, so we turn our pants back inside out so that we can sew back up the pant leg to close what we picked. All right, now to see how they turned out. I am thrilled with them. I think they turned out exactly like I hoped and envisioned, so I was very pleased. I did just want to say thank you so much for joining me once again, and please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of my doll projects.